guys, we we finally made it to our second major milestone of the year. And that is to unique equipment, that is to holiday chica, that is to holiday everybody because the West seemed to like the word holiday instead of Christmas, which I do understand. And so with that being said, Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about this new update that's coming, I think, very, very soon. Essentially, this is our second half of events as well as updates all the way up until the start of December. And so there are quite a lot of exciting things going on. I just want to rehash some existing content, talk about UEs and talk a lot more about the expectations, what the game is going to look like after this update. And so my dudes, without further ado, let's jump right into the content itself and let's start things off with Holiday Chica. And so as a lot of you know, the US, uh, a lot of the Western countries have now kind of replaced the whole Christmas thing with holiday. Like instead of Merry Christmas, it's like Merry Holiday or Happy Holiday, stuff like that. Completely get it. It's not a big deal. It just means that we have to find another way to refer to Holiday Chica because we can't stick a H in front of Chica. H is for Halloween. H is not for holiday. And so the community is still probably going to call her X Chica and there's nothing we can do about it. Su such is life. Anyway, just quickly on Holiday Chica, strong healer, sees a lot of use, especially in CB. She essentially summons like three little fairies and they get fed into the bosses and then they get TP and then yeah, all sorts of shenanigans happen from there. But aside from that, she herself is actually quite strong. Like you definitely could take her into your Tower of Luna or you could just use her for PVE use. However, if you don't have like the intent to actually push really hard in CB, I'm talking like probably top 10, 25, 50, maybe 100, then you can probably just pass on her however she is looking real real cute and so honestly i don't know if i can pass on her because like look at that smile guys look at that smile and this is the part where i say <laughs> uh here we go again all right and so with that being said let's move on to the next bit which is the carol that never was essentially another story event coming up we've got all new units so it is based on x chica x ayana and x kurumi and I believe this lasts for, yeah, okay, so it lasts until the start of December. And then soon after that, we will see New Year's because New Year's comes after Christmas or the holiday, the winter holiday. Winter for you guys anyway, because it is hot where I am. It is summer. It is Australia. Anyway, moving on. So in this one, we see we are going to be getting the X Kurumi. So X Kurumi, this is kind of like the scenario. Uh, should we farm for her? Should we actually refresh to push for the four star? Like a very similar scenario to the Halloween Miyako or or the summer cockroach the answer is you can i think a lot of us are now quite used to smashing that 115 and then like going on to farm the heck out of the bosses just to be able to four star the event limited character in this case x kurumi however in this case in particular i would say that she is most certainly skippable you you don't need that four star x kurumi the same as how you did not need the four star summer mifuyu and so hopefully that answers the question of should you refresh for the four star x kurumi only if you wanna, but she is most certainly not mandatory. All right, moving on my dudes, Christmas is coming, yay. But you know what else is coming? More shards, even more yay. And so pretty straightforward, we got the Nozomi and the Kurumi shards. Unfortunately, the Nozomi shards are just not that valuable considering they are based off of the dungeon coins. However, it is it is only a good thing, right? When we get shards, uh, this is exactly going to prepare you for the unique equipment because it takes 50 shards to get you up to get the equipment itself. And so that's quite nice. It's gonna save you a significant amount of dungeon coins. And honestly, guys, if you guys are capped out on dungeon coins, don't be afraid to use it on the equipment. A lot of the gold equipment, it's just like getting, it's getting to the point where there are a lot of dependencies on the gold equipments from the purple equipments, and it's getting really, really, really freaking dank. All right, and so with that being said, all the cookie cutter stuff out of the way, pretty sure that's pretty standard. And so welcome to unique equipment. We finally made it, boys. We finally freaking made it. And so as y'all already know, unique equipment is essentially where we get a new piece of equipment for each individual character. In a nutshell, it's going to give them extra stats as well as giving them extra effects on their skill one. Sometimes the stats are pretty dog water, but sometimes they are really, really game breaking. So for example, you've got, uh, you've got Shinobu with her UE, she gets TP gain rate, if I'm not wrong. And on top of that, the TP gain rate from the UE scales with the UE's level. And so you can see how some of them are pretty busted. However, let's come back to this guy over here, which is our first batch. So you can see we've got Hiyori, Yui, Rei, blah, 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 blah. 
And so all of these characters form our batch one for UEs. Let's talk about them very, very soon. Let's just cover off everything else. The other thing is that Sangnam survey is going to be available. Yeah, we'll talk about that very, very soon. Let's just get through the rest. It's very, very fast, guys. All right, so Dungeon Manor times two. We've got Grotto times two and uh, the... That's it. That's, that's kind of it. Almost. So I almost missed this, but you see over here, we've got level six of both Grotto quests will be unlocked on uh, this date. So the 2nd of December. So let me kind of set your expectations for the Grotto level six. It's it's okay. Like It's not really a significant jump, especially not in terms of like the increasing requirements that we need of mana and EXP for each of our characters. It most certainly does not quench the thirst of our mana guzzling characters. Like don't, don't expect too much from it, but it is a nice to have for sure. All right, and so that being said, let's hop back over to unique equipment. Again, these guys are going to be available on the 30th of November. Now, before we get into the unique equipment, I want to set expectations about the Sanctum Survey itself. In a nutshell, Sanctum Survey is Grotto V2. That really summarizes it. I'm pretty sure we get Sanctum Survey like one and two. And so guys, here is a picture of the Sanctum Survey that will be coming. So as you can see, it is essentially Grotto again, 2.0. However, the difference between Sanctum Survey and Grotto is that you can actually farm out each of these stages as much as you want up until the limit. In Grotto, you have two attempts across all of the same category. So like you can only do two in the EXP and two in the mana. However, for Sanctum Survey, as you can see, you can do five times of level two and then five times of level one as well. And so as you guys can start to imagine, especially when this is the start of unique equipment, this, this is gonna be a massive step I'm gonna sink. And so that is kind of like the first expectation that I wanted to lay out to you guys because we're already so constrained for stamina. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I am struggling to farm for my equipment. I am starving. I am thirsty and I, I can't get enough stamina, my guys. But generally speaking, unique equipment, they have shot up in the priority list. Like if you are building any characters, unique equipment is, it tends to be the first thing that you really look at. And so guys, the next thing I want to talk about is this guy over here. So as you can see, it actually drops shards instead of like a full heart container thing. And so guys, if you remember back to Lunar Tower, you'll remember these guys over here. It's like the full completed heart container thing. And so you'll notice that there is in fact a difference between these heart containers, these full ones, and these guys over here. In a nutshell, these guys are the shards to these guys over here, the complete copy. However, they actually both have different utilities. So this is what you use when you go and create the unique equipment itself for the character. And when you want to upgrade that unique equipment, you have to use the shards. You can't use the full completed thing over here. And so as you can imagine, it's a one-way street. You can use the shards to create one of these full heart containers, but you can't split it into shards. And so considering that we've already had two Lunar Towers, I would say hold on to the shards until you know that you need to actually put them together to make the UEs. Because otherwise it might mean that you're not able to upgrade your important UEs. So for example, like raise UE upcoming, and then you might end up making a useless UE for like your UE, for example, or like your Siren. All right, and so with the mechanics out of the way, again, let's revisit the first batch in the terms of priorities. Because again, UE actually affects quite a fair bit with it's just such a little change. And so my guys, before we go any further, I need to give thanks to Niara for this spreadsheet. It, it is really, really good and concise. And so there are a few key callouts and the major, major one is going to be Pekrin. You're going to be seeing Pekrin as well as Kurumi all over the arena, everywhere. Not only in arena, but generally speaking, Pekrin becomes like your new Nozomi, essentially. Nozomi traditionally has been a very, very reliable tank, whether it be against physical or magical. And then now comes along Pekrin. However, Pekrin, remember, she is a selfish tank. She buffs herself. She heals herself. She gives herself a shield. And so if you still are looking for like the tall or like the utility in the stuns, stuff like that, you're, you're still gonna be looking at the Nozomi and the Kuka. However, outside of those utilities, she is a freaking monster in terms of like, she is a wall that you just cannot break down. And so my guys, you're gonna be seeing her everywhere, but especially PVP. And so get your anti stores ready. All right, and so the next character is Rei. So I think we've talked about Rei so many times. Rei, when you're her UE comes out, she is traditionally going to be like forced into CB pretty much like always. And you might see her in some PVP. PvP comps. I highly doubt it, but like she, her main utility is going to be in the CB. All right. And so third, you can see that all of these are highlighted blue, but I'm going to say like Kurumi is, is most certainly in my opinion, one of the yellows because she is the start of like trying to bring stall back. I, I'm not saying that stall is hundred percent going to come back, especially because we have a lot of anti stall right now, but like she is essentially going to be buffed.
buffing UE to everybody, but also boosting their defense by a significant amount. However, the really nice part is the upgrades to her UE. So as you can see, 245 HP going up to 745, so that's 500 HP. And on top of that, she is going to be getting 40 all defense from 20 up to 60 and 1k HP regen. Like, like holy moly. And so with all of these factors, all of these stats combined, like there is not a single useless piece of stat in this UE. And so it's for these reasons that you should see Kurumi as well as Pekrin in the arena a lot more. All right, and so let's have a look at the next few ones, which I think are pretty low priority. So we've got Kiaru, and Kiaru essentially, she gets attack and crit. And on top of that, she also gets a defense debuff. It is AOE defense debuff. However, the defense down is only 15. It's just, unfortunately, I, I don't think it's that strong. But if you are an avid Kiaru user, like it's, it's a good thing, right? Like th there is nothing bad about this. It becomes AOE, but also you're getting defense down. It's just that in terms of like utility and value, the other ones are just significantly better it's hard to compare to those and so moving on we've got the Kokoro UE and she is getting HP boost she's getting attack and all defense it's okay I guess but for the UE effect itself buffs own attack by 1100 and TP boost like it's a good thing but you don't really need it 100% like the upgrade anyway all the UE contributes is a DPS upgrade as well as potentially a faster UB which means like more survivability which also means like maybe some more DPS because like the UB also gives more attack and stuff and so after that we've got the Nozomi UE in which we are getting an extended duration on the stun from 1.5 to 2 seconds as well as a P attack debuff and so that's pretty much just saying we are going to be getting more survivability out of Nozomi however as you guys know typically if we're going to be hitting like range 280 from Nozomi you're going to be hitting the tanks and they're already not really doing that much damage to you anyway so it's okay it's decent but you can see why I'm not a massive fan of it all right and so moving on Hiyori essentially she gets AOE damage so that's quite nice especially for PvP maybe technically speaking Hiyori becomes kind of a cleave character and sometimes you will see her in CB and PvP but most of the time you're not going to. All right, and so now we are in the red. We've got Yui, we've got Saren. They are both like really, really low priority, like I said before. Saren's UE just makes her enmity skill more enmity. Unfortunately, outside of her TP boots, I think she's just actually not that great. And the UE is buffing the not that great stuff. And then as for Yui, we have the UE boosting up her skill damage by 50% and also debuffing its P attack by 750. Again, she is probably going to be hitting the front unit. It's probably going to be a tank. And so as you can imagine, the utility in that is kind of, it's kind of meh. Of course, on the flip side of it, like for Nozomi and for Yui, you can most certainly think of it from a PvE perspective, like, oh, you're clearing the story mode and it's getting a little hard and you can debuff those monsters like yeah however for like the more end game players yeah they, these aren't going to be that strong however for the upgrades what i do like to see is the hp boost from 13 up to 38 hp boost is actually so massive but on the flip side i also see all defense so all defense from 13 going up to 38 it, it makes it a little sweaty, right? It just potentially makes your UB a lot more tight. That That's really it. But again, generally speaking, like I agree with the majority of this. I just think that Kurumi is a little bit underrated. Guys, remember, be prepared. You're going to be seeing a lot of Kurumis and Pekrins in the arena. But otherwise, I think that's it. Hopefully that was a pretty good refresher on like all of these different UE characters. And so with that, I want to ask you guys, and this is probably going to be a pretty interesting question. Did you guys prepare for this adequately? Have you got your at least 50 shots for your Pekrin, for your Rei, for your Kurumi, uh, potentially for like your the rest of them, the Kiaru, Kokoro, Nozomi, Hiyori? Did you go the extra mile and go into the 100 shards for each of them? Or are you just straight chilling and everything is cool and uh, you'll just take it as it comes? And so my dudes, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But my OG pre-con gang, you already know what's up. Please consider a like, please consider a sub, and otherwise, as our newly buffed main heroine Pekrin once said, all good things must come to an end, and so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.